Stockton Steinball. Stockton, fourth place in the moto, but good enough for the championship. And this young man right here has some for you. Stockton Steinboat, accept your number one plate. Let's hear it for the champ. The number one plate is his, Stockton Steinboat. Stockton, did you know what you had to do as far as winning the championship? Put those down for a second. Did you know what you had to do to win the championship? You got fourth. Yes, sir. Well, uh, at the beginning of the moto, I had to uh, I had to get top eight, and uh, if I got top eight, then I would win, and I got fourth, so I uh, got the job done. You sure did. You got fourth on the moto. That was a perfect. That's all you had to do. Who would you like to thank, Stockton? I'd like to thank my mom and dad, my mechanic, Trevor, Performance Factory, Premier Plumbers of Texas, uh, Tim and Chorley Designs, uh, everyone at Underground MX, Twin Air, John Lop. Um, and that's it. All right, one more time. He's the champ, Stockton Steinbow. Well, all right, back on the track right now. Vet 30 plus out front. Early leader Paul Parabinos hitting the deck right now on that number 15. Husqvarna as they rounded the first turn, making their way back into the beach right now, headed for the Rocky Mountain. Looks like we've got a KTM, no, it looks like a Honda mounted rider out front trying to get a D right now. Working their way back into the front section of the track. Everybody stacked up after the Ten Commandments there. Everybody really coming out of uh, Storyland really tight. Couple caution flags flying back through. It'll look like a pack of yellow jackets, all the yellow flags I see back there right now, Rodney. But out front right now, it's that, let's see, number 68, 68. machine. That's uh, Lars Lindstrom out of Thousand Oaks, California on the, the American Honda back by Fox, Throttle Jockey, Gunner Gasser, Yoshimir, and Renthal. He pulled a 6-7 in Motos 1 and 2 and opening up with a lead here. Paul Parabino's again taking that early lead, having that uh, little uh, issue out there. So we'll see where he's able to get up to. Taylor Painter, the 44 machine, we've seen nearly go down there. He's a rider that is in line for this championship right now with a 2-3. And uh, Justin Kelly tied with him coming into this one with a 3-2. Kelly, I'm uh, not real sure where he's at right now. He's all the way back in a ninth place position, so uh, he is looking at fourth if he stays where he's at with a 3-2-9. Here's the interesting scenario shaping up. Andrew Matuzic, who went one and six in Moto one and two, is in fourth. He is looking at second place overall. He's got about four positions that he's got to get through in order to uh, move into that number one position. So a couple of things that will work in his favor is if Painter makes a mistake here, otherwise he's got it with a 2-3-2. Two, two. So he's got to get around Painter and he's got to hope too that Painter has some issues and loses a, a couple of spots out there. So this is going to be an interesting one and it's still early in this one. Uh, your Moto2 winner, uh, I'm not real sure where uh, he is running right now. That was... Um, Actually, uh, Moto2 winner was uh, Paul, oh, Paul Parabinos. That's right, he went 7-1, uh, so not real sure where he's falling into the field right now. We only see through our top 21, so as we look through the overalls, it looks like he's running 7-1 and 40 right now. That would still be good enough to, for a top 10 overall for Paul Parabinos. So heartbreaker for him. So basically all he's got to do is start working up through the pack. He'll work up through the uh, top 10 with every few passes or so. Yeah, what's a bummer though, Rodney, is uh, he got up there probably 20th position or so. Uh, I don't know if something was wrong with the bike, if maybe mud got jammed in that throttle, maybe something up with the levers. Uh, it, he didn't fall over that hard. He was able to get up relatively quick. And um, to see him scored as 40th on that first lap, a bit of a shocker to me. Well, let's check in with what's going on here on Racer TV as we see Charles Ellis right now. And I believe that's Andrew Matusik and James Singer may be looking at uh, Taylor Painter here as well on that 44 Kawasaki as they have really closed up sort of tight out there, Megawatt, as we are nearing the completion now of this second lap of racing, the hard left-hand turn, and here's the way it's going to finish up for lap number two as the 44 of Painter will maintain or actually move into the lead. Lars Lindstrom, where did he fall off to there? Holy he, cow. He's dropped back to third as Ellis has gotten around as well. Andrew Matusik now up to fourth. 
Painter's looking at a 2-3-1, and now Matuzic's still with a 1-6-4, so he's got even more ground to cover. He's got to get around Painter, and he's got to hope for help from Edmonston, Ellis, Lindstrom, somebody that can get between those two. Yeah, really going to need some help there, but Matuzak, of course, not going to give up. But really surprised to see Painter put that charge on there at the end of lap number one, going into lap number two. Really able to put himself into the lead with command. And Lars Lindstrom, of course, longtime industry uh, industry member, falling back to that third position there in just a matter of a couple corners. Looking about 218 to uh, 17 lap times. Of course, Ellis, fastest lap last time around, 216.3. Track starting to come around just a bit now. A lot of these lines that existed just a little bit ago in the slop, not use, uh, not working anymore. So not a lot of use out of some of those lines. Starting to work the insides, trying to keep the momentum up around the outside, but not really having much luck with some of those Ooh, central lines. Ellis going underneath there, getting uh, the 44. Painter pushed out just a little bit, coming now out of the sand and heading into the Suzuki Waterworks Station as we head toward the Rocky Mountain ATV turn and uh, we got a new leader again Charlie Ellis Charles Ellis out front now Ellis is looking at as far as uh, his scores on board the 81 machine a 8-8 eight, eight right now so where does that put him as far as the overall is concerned he had an 8-8-2 eight, eight, that had him at seventh place position that all move him up probably into a top five position or pretty I close to, to it at this particular point right now it is uh Andrew Matusik though, trying to track down Lindstrom, and is that Matusik? Yeah, now in behind, I believe, uh, the 44 of Painter. So Painter's under fire again. Matusik has gotten up to third, so here's where things are gonna start getting, getting interesting. And the top three riders and two of these riders battling for this title in this Vet 30 plus class. Yeah, these guys up front, they know where they need to be. Look at this, a small mistake right there by Painter as he shoots over that landing just a bit. But Ellis right now knows exactly what he has to do. But look at Matuzic. Matuzic knows that he needs some luck right now. Not much he's going to be able to do about it physically. Ellis able to get just a bit of a gap there as they work their way back into that first turn area. Painter still hanging on to the second place. Matusik knows what time it is, sitting right back there, but not a lot he can do about it without some help. Hey, folks, as we watch this battle unfold, just want to remind you that FMF's got some uh, deals going on over there right now. $10 T-shirts at FMF. Stop on over and check out the blowout special they got going on. And check out what's going on here. Another battle for the lead now as Matusik is trying to get around Ellis. This would be, one, I believe, our fourth leader in this Vet 30 Plus class here in only three, now four laps of racing. Much like that plus 40 class this morning. Extremely exciting, had the Bud Man and those guys in there making it happen. And you know, when we take a look at some of the classes today, Rodney, just a tighter racing in these senior classes and vet classes as we've seen anywhere. So Ellis and Matusak, and what happened to Matusak as we see the 81 now exiting the waterworks. Looks like a tough break there for the 41 machine that he'll have to regain composure. He was less than a second and was uh, side by side in a lot of places there coming through there. I thought that we might see the pass being made, but he's gonna have to regain composure, put his head down and start charging again. Ellis out there getting it done plain wrap, man. I don't see any graphics on those shrouds out there. Coming to make a statement with his ride and not his bike and uh, takes a look right now at about a one second lead last time through, 0.779, but not a lot of breathing room with Andrew Matuzic still in there. As you see these guys working their way into the front of the track again, look at this, Lars Lindstrom. Lars Lindstrom, who we talked about just a bit earlier, coming under fire again right now. Jeremy Cook trying to make his way up in there and do something about it, Rodney. Well, I tell you, a uh, tough break there for uh Matusik and there. it gets by, yeah. yeah. Matusik holds on the second. He's going to try to get, get there. Tainer is back there in the number uh, three spot. But Cook, as we said, uh, trying to get by. Lindstrom trying to get by. So uh, these guys pushing through. Uh, so now as we reassess the order, Megawatt in our top five, it looks like Ellis, Matusik, Painter. Is Cook around Painter now? Let's double check that. It is uh, 
Yes, I believe that he has made that pass. So uh, Lawrence Lindstrom and Garrett Edmondson back in six. James Singer in seventh. Justin Kelly in the number eight spot. Jordan Oxley is ninth. Brad Barons rounds out your top ten here after four laps of racing complete. Ooh. Looks like we got a couple moves making uh, some happening back in the pack just a little bit in that seventh and eighth place. Uh, Singer and Kelly fighting it out back there. But I gotta tell you, Rodney, it looks like uh, Ellis up front trying to make a little distance right now. Doubled that lead over the last lap. Matuzic still hanging on right there, but uh, Painter just kind of riding around in that third place, kind of watching these two, maybe waiting on a mistake. If you look at lap times, their fastest lap times, only a few tenths of a second difference between Ellis and Matusik. It was just those little, little differences. Now, as you look at the way things are breaking down, uh, Matusik is scoring a 1-6-2. That scores him nine. Painter now all of a sudden in a little bit more of a uh, heated situation with a 2-3-3. He's got eight. So if anyone gets around Painter, say if Cook gets around Painter, then all of a sudden, I believe Matusak will end up taking over the national championship with a 1-6-2, and he won't even have to get around Charles Ellis. Yeah, he wouldn't even have to make the pass in that situation. Looks like we're running into uh, a little bit of a situation right here. These guys are going to have to make a decision. Are we going to follow for a little bit, or is it time to make the pass and try to make it happen? But uh, running out of time here, Rodney. We are, but look at those, uh, those one, two, three, four, five. The top six riders, actually, with Garrett Edmonston only about 1.2 seconds behind Lindstrom when they came through the last time. It was less than a second behind Cook, who was only a second behind Painter, who was a couple of seconds behind Matusik. As we round this one out, uh, Painter does somehow or another. He gets all the way up into the number one spot. Looks like Ellis had problems. I didn't see that happen. 1.3 seconds back, he, his lap time dropped from like a 2.16 to a 2.23. So Ellis, uh, a little bit of a bobble miscue there. Uh, Painter able to capitalize, and all of a sudden, 2.31, and Painter is in championship contention again. Changes just that quick, Rodney. You know, I looked at uh, Larson as he goes by that time, Lars Larson, and, or Lindstrom, rather. It looks like just a bit of bobble in the back of that bike may possibly have a flat tire he's working with. Man, uh, it, just, I mean, we were looking at a one-point deficit between those two when Painter was back in third. He gets all the way up to first. Matusik drops back to a fourth-place position. Now, all of a sudden, it's five points that separates Matusik from the national championship. Now, Painter, uh, 1.3 seconds. He seems to be the fastest rider right now with three or four seconds gap over now third-place ride, the Sandman, Mudman, uh, as uh, they call him in Florida, the tree guy. <laughs> the tree man. <laughs> so uh, he is, uh, whatever it is that he's called, he's uh, lightning fast here today in the Vet 30 Plus class. He worked his way up through the pack to third now. Coming up on that 13 minute mark, Rodney. So starting to really get to uh, go time for these guys. So going to be curious to see what kind of strategy is going to come into play here. Matusik. And to be honest with you, Matusik's really at yeah. the mercy. He is, but he's gotten, he's gotten around. Uh, that's who we see battling right here. This is the battle between Matusik, Edmiston, and Ellis now. That's actually turning into a battle for the second place position. And not far ahead of them should still be the 44 of Painter right now. So the reaching for the championship, not out of contention for Matusik right now. Ellis holding the fast lap time this uh, this time around a 2.16.349. That was on lap number two. Looking at two 18s right now consistently. Now Painter just come through lap number 16. He dipped back down into the two 17s again, as did Matusik. Now the gap uh, showed last time four seconds. Not so this time around. So Matusik able to uh, maintain that position, trying to put a little bit of a charge on here up into that number two position takes us down to a three-point swing right now rodney so it looks like something really going to have to happen it is we've watched this thing go from one point to five points to three points so a lot of action out there on the track so far in this one rodney well painter in the exchange that's going on now behind him in that battle for second place has buffer got that buffer zone of about 4.2 seconds now 
Matusik, Edmondson, now Jeremy Cook, and Lars Lindstrom. Well, Lindstrom's dropped back a little bit, and Cook's also dropped back a little bit, but it's Matusik and Edmondson doing some battle, trying to get through some lap traffic out there. So those riders are continuing to wage war there on lap number seven. Uh, as we take a look at the way standings were whenever they finished lap six, Painter, Matusik, Edmondson, Cook, Lindstrom, Ellis with, had dropped back to six now. Justin Kelly in seventh, James Singer in eighth, Jordan Oxley ninth, Paul Hines rounding out the top ten. Painter in control of the championship with a 2-3-1 score of six. Matusik looking at a 1-6-2 for a score of nine. Garrett Evanston top three overall with a 5-4-3 as he would finish third here in this closing moto. Blue flags waving around the course right now as we are at that 15 and a half minute mark here in the Bet 30 Plus class. Taylor Painter still in control of this as he looks to take control of the Race Tech podium. A Moto3 win and a uh, championship, so uh, that would make things easy for Kevin Kelly down on the podium here today. 2-3-1, making pretty simple math. Six beats nine all day, so Matusik not able to do thing anything about it at this point. Just hoping for some kind of bad luck up there for your leader, but uh, Painter right now about four seconds ahead, so got plenty of room to just kind of take it easy. Going to maybe try to bring this one in right now and call himself the 2017 champion of our Vet 30 Plus class. Well, seven laps down right now for Painter, Matusik, Edmondson, and Cook. And as we said, three points are in the the gap between uh, Matusik and this national title. And Taylor Painter, all he has to do is maintain that number one position right down to the checkers, which. If, Considering all things right now, that looks like what he is going to be uh, in charge of doing. You have to wonder if Matusik has done the math, if he thinks he's in contention for it right now, if he's just kind of like decided to let this go as they are matching lap times right now, 2.18.3, 2.18.7 for Painter and Matusik respectfully. Uh, we've got uh, actually only about a half second faster lap on the fastest laps turned by Matusik. So, uh, not a lot of saving grace there unless a mistake be made by Painter here in the closing laps for uh, Andrew Matusik, I don't think. Looks like the two-lap card is out, Rodney. So uh, waiting for the leader to come back around. I believe we're going to pick up the white flag. I believe I do see the two-lap card out there. So uh, this one winding down. And like we said, it's all going to be in the hands of Taylor Painter as he circulates the course for the final time, waiting on that white flag. So looking right now for our leaders. There is Painter right now making his way into the Hart Fredolin race course as we see him now under the Kawasaki banner and into the Thor Beach turn. The Mogul set. It is the curved uh, rollers there. I mean, we've got a couple of nice roller sections now with the uh, Rocky Mountain Rollers out there. That is just the way that the track has developed here this week. And white flag is out for Taylor Painter as he is on his way to history here at Loretta Lens. 2-3-1 Two, Two, for a national championship in the Bet 30 Plus class. You know he worked hard for it. You know we dreamed that this would be the likelihood and the possibility, but you never know for sure until you come and roll off that starting line. And that's exactly what he's done. He's put a lot of time and a lot of effort into making this moment come to pass. And with less than a lap to go, Taylor Painter is enjoying the likelihood of being called national champion. Longest lap of the week for him right now. Painter going 2-3-1, as you said, extremely consistent there. Uh, seen some crazy numbers, of course, leading to championships, but 2-3-1 uh, steady as she goes from the very first moto in that second to uh, that third in moto number two. And of course, rounding it out with a gold medal here and a championship. It's gonna be the longest half a lap of uh, Taylor Painter's season. 
no doubt about it. Matuzic still in that number two position on that 41 Suzuki, about 4.2 seconds behind last time around. I think that gap's gonna be a little shorter. I think Painter has let up just a bit, making his way past the waterworks now. Coming out of Storyland in front of the waterworks. One more time through the beach. Up and over that double in the back, our leader Painter holding it to the inside there through the beach, making his way to the Rocky Mountain as he comes into that tight left-hander for the final time. Focusing on the job at hand, and the job at hand is making it to the finish line right now. No more mistakes. There he comes out around the pond, going to make his way up and over the jump one more time through that wide sweeper and uh, Taylor Painter just a few hundred yards from his championship here at Loretta Lynn's here at the ranch. So one last left-hand turn. Here he comes right now, Taylor Painter. Up and over the last couple doubles. Fist pump right there, the number 44 Kawasaki. And he Taking the win in Moto3 and a championship here at the ranch. Ooh. Taylor Painter knows just exactly what he did. He knows a moto win was as good as a national championship, and he can tell it, you know, he sees it in the face of everyone coming down to congratulate him, his wife, his daughter there in hand as well. A very happy family moment for these folks. Taylor Painter able to uh, share that there. The number 44 machine, a Kawasaki rider, he hails out of There is the uh, Floridian of Garrett Edmiston right now, the uh, second or third place position. You know, Garrett, as strong as he finished out there, looks very frustrated as he finished 13 seconds back behind Andrew Matusik. Looks like a lot of uh, emotion as he really wanted to get a win in this one as well. He is hot as well. Look at that. He goes and grabs the hose and douses himself down. <laughs> that right there shows you just exactly what Loretta Lens is like right now. It is hot, even for the Floridians out there as they train in these types of conditions and uh, prepare themselves for just these types of moments. And it's still hot for those riders out there right now. Painter, Matusik, Edmonston go one, two, and three here in the uh, uh, moto. As far as the overall goes, it will be Painter, Matusik, and Kelly. Garrett Edmonston will score fourth overall here for 2000. And 17 and Jeremy Cook will score a fifth place overall with a 454. What a challenging uh, set of motos we saw all week long for the Bet 30 Plus class. And I can tell you, it's one of those motos that leaves you wanting more. That's the beauty of Loretta Lens, and that's the beauty of these third motos. If we ended it at any point of this it, during this day, I can say it has left us with le uh, wanting more. And, and as we draw close to the end of uh, 2017 running, man, uh, it really is uh, almost heartbreaking to know that uh, we'll be heading home tomorrow evening and, and we won't uh, have that opportunity to see more great motos like this. But we will wait patiently for another year to roll around. But right now, we got celebrations to do. Taylor Painter is the man doing that. Congratulations to him. A good 2-3-1. Matusik did everything he could to try to pull it out. A solid finish with a 1-6-2. Let's head on down to uh, our good friend there, Kevin Kelly. <laughs> All right, we are down on the podium, and uh, I'm going to hand this off. This is pretty important to this guy. Garrett Edmondson will finish up third in the moto. Garrett says he has been dying just to get on the box. You made it and says, what are you going to do with that medal when you get back home, Garrett? As soon as I get home, I'm just going to hand it over to my dad and tell him thank you for everything. Yeah, I get it, man. All the dads that introduced all the kids to racing, and I'm sure that means a lot to you. You said you've been trying how many years? Uh, this is my time here. I came when I was a kid, and I even broke side the top ten the last three years of the coming in the vet class, and uh, broke top five every time. Awesome. Well, third place in the moto. It's got to feel good. You got anybody you want to thank, Garrett? Yeah, I want to thank HPD Motor Graphics, Oakley. Um, I need my bike over here. Walt Paul Inc., DSI MX, Trackside Treats, uh, Recluse. Uh, they hooked me up with a new clutch uh, right before that moto got off the great good. Dunlop. Tires been hooking up all week, got off the top five starts. Uh, pro circuit for sure. Um, Team Green, Doug over there, always helping me out. And anybody else I forgot, thank you very much for helping me get here.
Hey, congratulations. Let's hear it for Garrett Edmondson. I'm sure dad's back home watching. Congratulations, Garrett. Enjoy the metal pops. And we're going to say hello now to our second place finisher, Andrew Matusek. Come on up here, man. Second place on the moto, Andrew Matusek. Come on down. Hustle, Andrew. He's doing push-ups, getting that party pump. I get it. You're going to be on camera, Andrew. These old guys. Come on, Andrew. Yeah, man, get your butt down here. I can't cuss like that. I would. If this was Bremen Race Park, I'd have just said we're done with you. Come on, Andrew. He's putting his jersey back on. Look at this. He can't he still have the jersey on. All right, come here. Come around the front side of this thing here. Put that around your dirty neck. I'm not getting close to that. Andrew Matusa, I don't think I've ever had the privilege of actually doing a podium with you, man. We're both back from Georgia here. Tell me what it feels like, man. You got second place. Probably not exactly where you want to be, but you're in the hunt. Not in the hunt anymore. That was the last straw. So uh, I just made a mistake over there. I uh, had a good line before Ten Commandments. I was running the outside, and then um, I, I rode uh, – Rode a defensive race, never got out in front. I mean, I, I held it for one corner, so it was the last corner that was good enough, but it didn't do it. Uh, I tried to block his line, and then uh, looked like a 50 rider going through the whoops, feet off, sitting down, you know, rolling through them, freesingles.com, so didn't go so well. But, yeah, it was awesome. Everyone out there, you know, I had I had battles with everybody that time. Uh, I mean, me and Garrett used to battle in the woods 10, 15 years ago, so it was awesome. I had to uh, had to get on my past in the sand whoops, but we had a great time. Yeah, I still see your old man John's running around out here just like a blink of an eye. It's 15 years ago. Anybody you want to thank before we uh, send you on your way? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first and foremost, God for keeping me safe. Mom and dad, sister, uh, girlfriend, Todd Hicks, Aaron, uh, Max's tires. I hooked up great. I need to do some more starts to get off that starting line. Um, uh, Nate Martin, Full Gas Fitness, kept me feeling 100% the whole time. You know, I pumped up there about four laps ago. I handed it back over, and I was like, you know what? You got to go. Now's your time. So. I went for it, but I came up just a bit short. Um, Max's, Max's tires, Kyle, everyone over at FMF, Joel, keep my bike running good. Um, Wiseco, Kometic, uh, Carb Sport, Race Day Picks, Digital Dave, he's like second dad to me. Um, everybody that I forgot, thank you so much. Let's hear it for second place, Andrew Matusak. Good job, Andrew. No, I do not. I'm not going to interview Mike Pelletier. All right, now we're going to say hello to the champ, folks. Let's hear it for Taylor Panther. Nice job, Taylor. I'm going to give you some hardware here, and then we got more coming. So we need some extra hands. We'll step around the back of the bike, and we'll get that shield so if some of your competitors throw stuff at you, you can block that stuff. All right, yeah, your wife was running about, smashed the kid into a pole, and she was running with her baby. She was flying full tilt. All right. Everybody, the whole crowd, man. We want everybody. It's like like a music video. Taylor, tell me about that race. I know it feels good. You got everybody here with you. Man, that was crazy. <laughs> I got out to a good start, settled in in second, and uh, uh, what's his name? The dude. Uh, the dude back there we just talked to, Andrew Matusek? No, the guy in the Honda. It's all good. He messed up, man, and gave me the lead early and uh, kind of tightened up, ended up in third for a minute, and told myself it's just an off-road race, and, and settled in and started standing up, found some lines, and here we are up top. This is awesome. I know you got a ton of people you want to thank, these folks and the rest of the gang here. But you know what? Before I do that, I need to get the number one plate over to you. This is what you work for. Let's get out of the way. The AMA Bigelow will hand you that number one plate. There it is. That one feels good. All right, who, who do you want to thank, Taylor? Man, the whole crew, my wife, both my baby girls for supporting me and letting me do this. My wife for letting me do this again. My dad, man, we built two motors this week. We, I'm telling you, we almost missed a start. We were putting a top end on this thing. I couldn't do it without him. Uh, Ricky, Moto Mods, um, Jake Souter with has -Bens, Works Connection, FMF, anybody, man, everybody. Jason Walling with Brand Power. Just the whole crew that stuck with me and tapped. Now is the tapped house, and we're rolling, and we're bringing home a championship, baby. All right, let's hear it one more time for the Moto winner and the champ, Taylor Panther. They are celebrating on the podium. And we are about ready to light them up on the gate here as we begin racing, getting it back underway, send it back up to the Tower of Power. 
All righty, uh, we are down in uh, now working with uh, our good buddy Wheels down here and Kevin. Uh, join us down here on the uh, lower deck of the announcer's tower as we get set to go for this Super Mini 2 13 to 16 class. And